Today I'm going to show you how to take those landscapes to another level by combining exposures in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. Today we're going to show you something really cool you guys can do with your landscapes. We're going to be combining a couple different exposures. Now the coolest part about this is you guys don't have to actually take any different exposures in the camera. This is something you can do completely in Photoshop. We're using contest winner from last week's image, Michael W. And this is a very, very cool image. If you guys want your ed image edited on Florin, just submit it in a contest we have every single week. Let's go ahead and get to the image. It's going to be very, very cool. So here's our image as submitted by Michael. Already a very cool image. I like it a lot. It was taken in South Carolina. We've got some light rays coming through. And uh, after just a little bit of editing, this is what I've done to it. So you can see already a cool image but we've just kind of taken it to a different level with some editing so i'm going to show you guys how to do this and uh, we're going to go ahead and th go through it so i'm going to go ahead and delete that layer we don't need it we'll show you guys how we did what we did all right the first thing i want to do is take care of our darks and our lights we're what we're going to do is bring up our darks a little bit and we're going to bring our lights down now that might sound a little bit weird like we're just playing with our contrast there but we're going to be doing some things also we just basically need to bring it to a midpoint and then we can start tweaking it so i'm going to hit command j which duplicates our background layer. Now we have a layer one. Then we're gonna grab a curves adjustment layer. There we go. And I'm just gonna grab here in our RGB, I'm gonna grab this and just bring it up just to right about there. Okay, looking pretty good. And then we're gonna go back to our layers. Now you can do this in several different ways, but I'm gonna just show you the easiest way. What I'm gonna do is merge this curves adjustment layer with layer one. So I'm gonna shift click the two of those and hit command or control E to merge them together. So now we have a curves one layer and we have a background layer. Let's go ahead and do the same thing with our background layer, but this time we're gonna make it darker. So I'm gonna hit Command J on that. Let's bring that up above our curves adjustment layer, okay? Or the, the merge layer. Background copy, you can hit Command, close bracket to bring it up, or you can just click on it and drag it up or down. Okay, now we're gonna do the same with our lights. So let's grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna to go to curves again, and now we're gonna pull this down quite a bit, something right about there. Okay, and we're gonna shift click the two of those and hit Command E. We've got those merged together. Okay, so if you guys are following us, we've got our original, we've got a lighter, lighter version, and we've got a darker version. So now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be using a couple really cool tools within Photoshop to basically blend all those together in a really controlled way. So I'm gonna go over here to our lighter version. We're gonna click it visible, and then I'm gonna put a layer mask on this layer. So we have our layer with a layer mask on it. Now on the layer mask, make sure you're not clicked on your layer. Make sure you're clicked right here on your layer mask. What we're gonna do is go up to image and then down here to apply image. And what this is does, it basically takes a snapshot of everything you see and it puts it on the layer mask. So we can tell it to either be visible where the underlying layer is lighter or darker. Now, if you guys have been watching Flurin for a while, you know we use blend if as well. This works a bit different from blend if and for this sort of thing, it's just gonna be the thing, it's gonna be what you want. So when focusing on exposure alone, use apply image. Okay, here we are, hit apply image. Now we do want our layer here to be merge, channel, RGB, blending mode, we're always gonna keep on multiply and opacity on 100. Basically the only option you ever have to worry about is whether you're gonna be clicking on invert or not. And in this case, because we're bringing our dark slider, we do wanna click on invert. So there we go, we're gonna hit invert and I'm gonna hit okay. And what this does, let's hold alt or option and click on our layer mask. This is what the layer mask looks like now. It's just basically you can see it's an inverted snapshot of our image. What was dark looks light, what's light looks dark. So what it's doing is because we made this layer lighter using that curves adjustment before we merged it together, it's now telling this image where it's to be lighter, but only where this image is dark. So it's not affecting my highlights at all. It's only affecting my shadow areas. So let's hold alter option, get that back off, and we can see the before and the after. Okay, this is a very good way. This is very different from, by the way, just grabbing a curves adjustment layer and just make everything brighter because a curves adjustment layer will also affect your brights. This does not do it. It only affects your shadows. So it's a much more controlled way of getting, um, getting your exposure to be a little bit more even. Now keep in mind, let's go to image size. This is a 900 pixel wide image that has been highly compressed as a JPEG for the internet. So if I can get this much detail out of it from this thing that has almost no detail in it, trust me, if you guys are shooting in raw, you're gonna be able to get a lot of detail out of your images. Okay, so there we go with our darks. Now we're gonna do the same thing with our lights. We're gonna, we have our lights where I'm gonna be bringing those a little bit darker and I'm gonna click on a layer mask here. And now we're gonna go to image and then down here again to apply image. And this time we're not gonna click on invert and it's going to apply those just to my lights. 
There we go, Alt or Option, we can look at what our layer mask looks like. This is basically saying it's only gonna be visible where the lighter areas are. And let's just look at this layer before and after. So we're bringing all that much more detail into our highlights. So really quickly we can see we went from that to that, which brings a lot of depth and detail into our image. But we're not done, we got a lot more I wanna do. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna select a specific color range and really give it a boost. And for this image, I want that color range to be the greens that are in the tree. So we're gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna grab my brush tool and we can just hold Alt or Option to sample a color. And we're gonna go ahead and sample something here that's the greens that I wanna focus on. Let's sample these greens over right about there. So we can see that the color of our, um, the color of our foreground color here is the green that's in that tree. So now that we have that color as a foreground color, all I have to do is go to select and down here to color range. And it's basically gonna let me select everything that's a similar color range. And the more or less fuzzy I go, the more or less it's going to select. Now you can see here, it looks really kind of just full of artifacts and it looks pretty bad. The reason is JPEG compression. So I would recommend doing this on like a full size raw image, but you'll see, I'll still be able to get a lot of detail out of this. So we'll bring this fuzziness up to about there. What I'm looking for is like, I don't wanna select like just very, very specific greens and I don't wanna select everything. So somewhere right in the middle, we're looking okay. So I'm gonna hit okay and everything that was white in that, uh, in that preview we saw becomes a selection. So now what we can do because those areas are selections is I can really boost those areas in color, contrast, whatever I want. And I'm gonna do that with curves. So I'm gonna grab an adjustment layer. We're gonna go to curves. And now, as soon as I clicked on the curves, you can see my selection went away. And the reason is because, I'll hold alter option there, it loaded that selection automatically to my layer mask. So it knows, okay, that was selected. I grabbed a curve adjustment layer. Now it's gonna select it. Now it's only gonna affect those, uh, those colors. Okay, let's go to our green channel. And I'm just gonna grab this and pump it up. And you don't wanna go crazy with it because you're gonna get something that looks like this. But you can pull it up a little bit. And there we can see, pulling it up there, we'll get some more greens. Now I want a little bit of yellow in here as well. Blue and yellow are opposite, so I can just pull that blue down a little bit, which is gonna put more of that yellow color in there. And we're gonna put a little bit of red in there because we do have some reds coming through the light rays and we don't want it to look like, uh, like false. We don't want this to look like fake or you know overly Photoshoppy. Okay, so there we can see by this layer, we selected out those greens and now I really tweak those greens to bring out some of that natural vibrance in those greens, which is very, very nice. So we're gonna do the same thing with the shadows. And thankfully we have green and red, which play together very well. So here, we'll select our blank layer again. We'll go to our brush tool and I'm gonna hold alter option and sample this color here that's in my, in my ground. And this is focused on color. It's not focused on light or dark, it's focused on color range. Then again, we're gonna select and then to color range. Be sure you're on a blank layer when you do this, by the way, or it's gonna try to select something that's on your layer mask already. So select color range. Now it's gonna select that darker color. Let's just kind of bring this down a little bit. There we go. It's gonna select that color that's a little bit closer to the reds. And now what we're gonna do, let's just grab another curve adjustment on the top of this. And what you can see it's already, there we go. It's already loaded that selection as my layer mask. So what we're gonna do is grab our red channel and I'm gonna put a little bit more reds into that area. So we've got a little bit more reds. We're gonna put a little bit of green in there as well. There we go. And now what we can do is with our RGB channel, we can just make that just a little bit darker if we want. Let's put a little bit more red in there. I think we're gonna just like go a little bit farther than I would normally go, but it looks pretty cool for this. So there we go. We've taken those reds in our images and we've really pumped those up as well. So we can see there's the before with, um, well, that's actually, that has our, um, you know, light and dark adjustments in there, but there's before the color work and there's after the color work. We can see it really does make a pretty cool difference there. All right, we're almost done, guys. There's a couple things that I wanna to do to really call attention to some areas, and we're gonna be using a high pass layer, like a sharpening technique, but we're gonna do a couple really cool things that are gonna make it just like really pop in some areas. So the next thing I wanna do is we're gonna make a stamp visible layer. So that's shift option command and, sorry, shift option command N for a new layer, and then shift option command E for a stamp visible layer. I always recommend creating a new layer and then a stamp visible, because sometimes if you just create a stamp visible, if you're not, if you're not on, um, like if you're on a group or something, it won't let you make a stamp visible layer. So always create a new layer and then a stamp visible. All right, so there we have our stamp visible layer. We're gonna go to Shift Command U or um, Shift Control U to desaturate that. We're gonna change this now from normal down here to linear light. And we're gonna go to filter, other, and over here to high pass. Okay, and with this high pass filter, 
what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for it to just start to bring out those details. Like this is obviously way too much, it's gonna look fake. Um, this is almost nothing's happening. You can use your up and down arrows, there we go. And something like that really starts to bring out just these little area of, areas of highlight. So we're gonna hit okay there. Now I don't necessarily want this to be visible everywhere, I just want it to be visible where the light rays are actually hitting. So what we're gonna do is hold Alt or Option, put a black layer mask on that, and there we can just start to paint white and this will be like just where these light rays are hitting. And that's going to like give it that extra little bit of um, sparkle motion, which is, if you guys watched Don Darko, you'll know, it's pretty awesome. So there we go. Just, <laughs> I feel like Bob Ross, give it the extra bit of sparkle motion. Um, just that little bit of like sparkle in a couple areas is going to really draw your eyes to those areas. All right. And then we'll see with turning that off and on what that does. Just a little bit more detail. Now we're going to do the opposite, which is pretty interesting, and we're going to draw less detail from some areas. So again, we're going to make a new layer and a stamp visible. So Shift Option Command N, Shift Option Command E will make a new and then a stamp visible layer. Okay, we're going to hit Shift Command U to desaturate that again because we don't want this affecting our colors, just light and dark. Now I'm going to hit Command I, which is going to invert the layer, and we're going to be doing some special effects here as well. So inverted that layer, we're going to change this from normal to soft light. Now we can see we have like a really fuzzy looking image and that's because I inverted it. If I take the invert away by hitting command I again, it, it looks totally different, but hitting command I gives us like a real fuzzy looking image. Now we're gonna run a high pass filter on this again. So we'll filter other high pass and we're gonna choose a slightly larger radius. And this kind of gives you that like halo-y type of look. It was really popular like with like wedding photos in the eighties. Generally I don't, this is not a look that I like. Um, <laughs> So why am I doing it here, Aaron? Because it's a really good look to like call less attention to some certain areas. So let's say, okay, you can see this is like the, like, you know, everything's kind of blurry. Um, just like looks like mall wedding portraits, just not great. But it can be very helpful in some areas of the photos where you don't want a lot of attention to be called. So we're going to hold alter option, put a black layer mask on there, and then I'm going to paint white. Areas like the trees and things like this up on the very top of this image where you might not necessarily want your viewer looking at these areas. You know, this, this is not really the important part of the image, maybe just back there a little bit. Um, and what that does is it basically does the opposite of a high pass layer. Instead of like focusing your image on a certain place, it takes attention away from one place, which then in turn makes you focus on a different place. So using these two techniques in conjunction with one another are, is a really nice way to like do it subtly, but get attention where you want it. So I'll show you the before and after with those two on. So that's without anything, and there we go. So taking less attention from some areas and adding more attention to other areas. All right, guys, and if you wanted to just take this one step further, grab a curve adjustment layer. Let's bring our brightness up a little bit. All right, we'll put a little bit of red in there. We'll pull down our blue channel, which is gonna put some yellows in there. You can just do this as an overall, or what I'm gonna do here is just grab my brush tool and we're just gonna paint basically where these light rays are. I'm not trying to be super, um, you know, like it doesn't really matter where I'm painting is what I'm saying. I don't need to be super accurate here. I'm just like painting like blotches of light. Um, but the idea is to just get it to be like, you know, basically where those light rays are painting. This is what my layer mask looks like. I just did this with my brush tool. It's not that fancy. But we can see it does add a little bit more of effect there. And um, that's it, guys. So let's shift click all of those layers that we added to this. I'm going to hit Command G to group them all together. And now we can see here's our before and our after. It really didn't take a long time and we did a great job working with not only colors, we worked a little bit with exposure and we showed you guys how to draw attention to some areas and away from other areas. So we took an image that was already very good and just pumped it up a little bit higher. Guys, thanks so much. These are techniques you can use on really any of your photographs, anything to do with landscapes. I wouldn't so much suggest with people, but landscapes and like interiors, things like that. It's gonna be a really great way to even out those exposures and then bring attention to certain areas. Thanks so much for watching Florin, guys. I hope you learned a lot and I hope you love it. See you guys later. Florin, you guys later. Bye everyone. Pretty good outro. That was a pretty good outro. What'd you think? Comments? Questions? Concerns? Compliments? Confidants?